uh, welcome and uh, I mean, uh, give the time for the uh, guest speaker today, uh, Pastor Jeffy, uh, Jeffy Yohanan. Uh, he's from Ernagulam, Kerala. And uh, uh, dear Pastor, uh, he's working uh, among the Muslim community in, in Kerala. So uh, uh, actually, I'm not familiar with uh, uh, dear Pastor, but uh, uh, my brother-in-law, uh, Pastor Binoy Jacob, I mean, has introduced him uh, uh, that uh, the other day, and uh, he told me that uh, uh, he's a he's a blessed pastor, he's a blessed servant of God who speaks the word of God in a in a tremendous way, and uh, uh, he's able to uh, speak the message in in English too. So I mean, uh, I just called him and I spoke to him, and uh, uh, this is a great privilege for us to I mean uh, to have uh, Pastor Jeffy Yohanan with us and. Uh, I think uh, he will be introducing himself because uh, I did not know much about the uh, dear pastor and uh, we'll be hearing from him. And uh, I mean, let us all sit in the presence of God with a prayerful attitude and uh, shall we all I mean, put our hands together and welcome Pastor J.P. Yohanan in our midst. Praise God. Amen. Welcome, Pastor. Uh, yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, nice to be with you all, uh, especially. Uh, Greetings to all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm also uh, thankful to the Eternal Life Church and uh, Pastor Sam Kuti Matthew and uh, the whole members of the church for giving me this opportunity to share from the Word of God. Uh, as Pastor said, yes, Pastor Benoit is a very close friend of mine and we happen to be uh, in his church also just one week back. And, uh, so let's... Uh, be in a prayerful attitude as God would like to speak to all of us. And I believe as I am sharing, uh, God also speak to me also at the same time. Um, I would request uh, everybody to just take three things in your hand. Okay, just three things. Uh, every person in the family, not just one person in the family. Every member in the family can just take three things. Take one Bible. Take one notebook and a pen. Okay, take these three things and keep it now ready in front of you. Uh, so that as we are going to learn the word of God, I would uh, humbly request everybody to please write down these things uh, that you're hearing. And I believe uh, as uh, the message is going on, I believe that God will also speak to you personally. Uh, it might not be the things that maybe I might be sharing, but even God might speak to you in a personal way where you can also write down you can also note down in your note because uh, we might think, uh, you know, we will write after the message, but uh, I'm sure you will forget everything uh, by the end of the message because usually when we hear a message, uh, only 20% of the message gets into your heart and 80% uh, sometimes you don't get. So if you write it down in a notebook, so everybody, uh, the father, the mother, the children, everybody, I request you to, I know, Writing is not an easy thing right now because we always either type or maybe, you know, do in the mobile or in the, in the laptop. So I know writing is not an easy thing. But I request everybody to please write down because I know now it's not going to be totally, you won't understand everything. But later, there will be a time when you will take these notes and you will look back into it again. And that time God will speak to you at that moment also. So please uh, take down these things that you're learning. Um, I think the uh, host has made me the co-host also now, I believe. That's what Pastor said. Uh, can you make me also the co-host? Uh, so sometimes if as God leads, I would also... Uh, you can share, Pastor. You have the permission. It's available, is it? Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. <clears throat> okay, so we'll just, uh, in between, if I get the time, I'll, I'll maybe show you also what we're going to learn today, so you won't find the difficulty. Uh, as Pastor said, my name is uh, Jiffy Yohanan, and I'm working here in uh, Cochin, uh, or in Ernagulam, as some of you will be knowing. And uh, we work uh, among the non-believers, and uh, especially we, uh, though we focus on all the non-believers, we focus more on uh, Muslims, as Pastor said. Uh, so I request your prayers uh, because uh, it's not a separate calling that we're going among the Muslims. Uh, God has called all of us to share the gospel to everyone. 
So uh, we just caught hold on that uh, calling to reach everybody. And uh, I found that uh, uh, the church or the believers uh, are taking it uh, very easy uh, not to share to the Muslims. Uh, something has come into the heart of the believers uh, that they are away or they are having a distance with the Muslim community. So I believe God loves us and God loves also the Muslim community and God has called us to share even the gospel to the Muslims. In Kerala, there is almost one crore Muslims uh, in Kerala. It means almost 87 lakhs, so almost reaching close to one crore. And, and I believe uh, in the place that you are staying in California, I know there will be a lot of Muslims uh, maybe working with you, staying around you, or maybe uh, studying with you. And uh, I would really uh, request you and I also pray for you that God has sent you there to California, even to share the gospel to the Muslims who are there in California. Is anybody scared to share the gospel to the Muslims? <laughs> We serve an almighty God and uh, he's the king of kings and lord of lords and I believe that God can also use you to reach uh, to the Muslims over there in California. Okay. Okay, I'll just end with that introduction that we'll be doing over here and then between God tells me I'll share some things we'll be doing but if he doesn't leave, uh, leave me, we'll just go along with the word of God. Uh, let's turn our attention to Colossians chapter 3 and uh, we'll be learning uh, I'm studying a few verses from that chapter, uh, Colossians chapter 3. Uh, we don't have to uh, display the uh, verses on the screen. That's okay. I would request because everybody has a Bible. So I don't want anybody to just display, but uh, open your Bibles, uh, everybody, everybody in the house, uh, open your Bibles to Colossians chapter 3. And uh, we will read the first two verses. So write Colossians chapter 3, 1 and 2. And uh, I'll just read that for you. Uh, if then we were raised with, with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. If anybody is also willing to read, one of you can also read that verse again. Is anybody ready to read that in English? Somebody can read that right now. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you Thank died, you. and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Yeah. Thank, Christ you. Thank, you. Uh, thank you, Brother Joby. Yeah. First and second was that's enough. Thank you, so, thank you so much. So I'm going to talk to you about the topic. Uh, you can write the heading. Uh, things below and things above. Okay, this will be the heading that we can give for the message today. Things below and things above. Okay, so we're going to learn these two things. And um, and uh, <clears throat> you can see, is it uh, is the screen open? Hope we can see that, right? Yes, yeah. Pastor. Uh, things above and things below. This will be the heading. And we read the verse, Colossians chapter 3, 1 and 2. And uh, set your heart and mind on things above, not on things below. Okay, so the word of God is really emphasizing and giving more preference on things above. And the things that he has said not to look on is on the things of this world. Uh, but I know all of you uh, might be thinking in your mind, uh, but we think a lot about what? <laughs> we think about a lot of things, what is happening in this world, right? All the things above are heavenly things and all the things below are earthly things. Uh, the Holy Spirit is emphasizing and advising us to set our mind and set our heart on things above. Why? Because you know why? There is a tendency for all of us who are living in the flesh to turn our attention to the things of this world. Let me just uh, remind you and no, uh, make note to you that in the second verse, it is clearly written, set your mind on things above, not on the things of this world. 
That means God is specifically in, in, uh, insisting and saying you should not think about this world. You should not think about this earth. Does that mean that you should not go for work or you should not go for studies or you should not save anything? No, it doesn't mean that. It means, yes, we have to plan. We have to be in this world. He's not talking about the planning or about the job. or anything. No, he's telling us that we should not be too much focused on this world. We should not be too much worried about this worldly things. Don't be so sorrowful. Don't be so worried about this world. That's when another verse in the Bible, it says, you know, in this world, you'll have tribulations, but be of good cheer. See, see, so everywhere you go throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is everywhere you see, he's telling everybody, focus on heavenly things, focus on Jesus, focus on God. Because whenever you focus on this world, there is a chance for you to get depressed. There is a chance for you to fall in sin. There is a chance for you to get, you know, you might faint away in this world because of the uh, tensions of this world. So let's look into these things. We're going to study these two things. I want you to just uh, draw a line uh, on the page that you're writing this. I want you to draw a line in between, okay? <clears throat> in the between on that page, draw a line in between. I hope everybody is uh, writing. I don't want anybody to sleep. Okay, hello. Don't sleep on me. Okay, <laughs> please, uh, you know, note down everybody, uh, the father, mother, everybody, please write down. Draw a line. Draw a line in uh, between that page and on the left side, write things below. And on the right side, write things above. Okay, uh, things below. And uh, on the left side and things above on the right side. As I mentioned already, things below means earthly things and things above means heavenly things. So when we look through this chapter, it shows, you know, whenever you think about this world, you will get three things free. Okay. If you think about the worldly things, about the earthly things, you will get three things free. But when you think about the things in heaven or the things above, there also you will get three things, but you will not get it for free. You have to work it out. You have to spend time. You have to put an effort to get those things. So which is more easy? Hope you listen what I ask, you know. When you think about this world, about earthly things, you will get three things free. But if you think about heavenly things, you will get three things, but not free. You'll have to put an effort. Which is more better? Which is more easy? I know... Uh, when you go to the supermarket, uh, there, are, there is a word with four letters which attracts our eyes. Which, which is that word? Can you guess? <laughs> yes, yes. I think Reggie and Nancy, so there's daughters. Yes, can you guess? What is that, Mola? Free. Yeah, free. I think even Danny and Manju over there also, I think he also raised their hands. Uh, was that the guess, the same thing? Free? Yes. We get attracted, you know, we get attracted. Thank you, Mola. You're on the right side. Yeah. You know, you get attracted to that four letter word called free. You know, sometimes, you know, we see, you know, buy one, get two free. Or, you know, some people are uh, desiring. If it is written, buy one, get five free, they're more happy, you know. So, you know, even though if you don't want it, you just push the trolley and you see that free and you try to put it into that trolley because anyway, free, right? In Malayalam, we say, you know, so you know, so that's what people say, you know, and they put it inside the trolley. And because when you come to the counter, also you have to show off that you have something in the trolley because the neighboring uh, lane where the you know the the trolley is filled with things. So we also try to fill the trolley with with things. You know why? Because we want to show that we are also having money with us. So free is a thing that attracts us. So there is a chance for us to go behind the things of this world because you will get it free. Now let's look. Let's look into these things. What is the things that you can get free when you are focusing? That means uh, I'm going to try to explain it more better because what is going to happen? You know, why I'm telling this, you know, why now people are not spending time to meditate on the word of God. People are not taking time to spend quality, healthy prayer in before the Lord. Everybody is very busy. Even the young people, even the old people, even the elderly people, all of them are telling you know, no time to meditate the word of God. And because of that, 
the word of god is not there it's not established it's not rooted in our hearts and because of that there is a tendency for us to uh, go more into the world you ask any child you ask anybody you know i have asked many people you know how is your uh, prayer life and many people say yes yes we have family prayer i said no i'm not talking about family prayer i'm asking about personal prayer how much time you have personal prayer? i know when i'll be telling these things everybody might be poking each other okay the husband will be poking the wife kanda kanda look look what he's talking he's talking to you you know and the wife will poke the husband and say look look you are not praying and the parents will poke the children right now ah look 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 that servant of god is talking to you now see no i'm not i'm not talking to poke anybody i want you to examine your own life how much time do you spend alone meditating the word of god how much time are you taking to meditate or maybe spend time in prayer before god everybody is busy and because of that now people are not willing to spend time before the lord and because of that the worldly things are entering into them they are being caught by the world not only the young people even elderly people in churches there are fights going on quarrels are happening splits is happening they are not being able to forgive they are not being able to show compassion why because the word of god is not rooted in your hearts people are so angry with each other now let's look into these things why why god is emphasizing a lot to meditate on the word some people will say yes i read the bible let me tell you brothers sisters you should not read the bible never read the bible okay you read the bible when you go to church because the the pastor will say okay let's read psalms you know that is reading but when you are alone when you are alone with the word of god never never read the bible only meditate the word of god bible clearly says you look into the whole bible there is no place in the bible where there says read no everywhere you see you know you know uh, meditate contemplate you know uh, you know he is always telling you to look into the word of god meditation is not reading have you have you seen anybody meditating on the newspaper no they only read the newspaper but now what is happening you know people are even reading the bible some people read the bible in the morning you know why right? before going to school before going to a uh, job they'll just read one bible verse the, and just go you know why because they don't want to be hit by a truck they don't want to face any accident maybe they want to lose the job so many people are now reading the bible you know why because they don't want to lose the job they don't want god to get angry with them no 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 meditate you know reading the bible is not putting soap you know <laughs> trying to apply soap on god no meditation is for you not for god meditation is for your spiritual growth and if you say you don't have time brother sister i'm sorry you will fall into many things that i'm going to talk right now let's see number 1 the things below that page you see things below right number 1 right number 1 the first thing if you are not taking time to meditate the word of god if you are not taking time to have fasting and prayer in your life these are the things that are going to get into your life number 1 right verse 5 right verse 5 i'll read the verse 5 for you Every, i want everybody to write that and look into your bible right now it's written therefore therefore put to death your members which are on the earth fornication uncleanliness passion evil desire and covetousness which is idolatry see what's going on over here see what is the first thing that is going to get into your life the first thing that is going to get into your life is sexual immorality impurity lust evil desires greed all these things will start catching you and right next to this verse right next to that word, that verse right over there put to death put to death See how can you put to death sexual immorality? How can you put to death uncleanliness? It is only through the word of God. It is only through fasting and prayer. Now, because many people are not meditating the word of God, people are falling into sexual sins. People are falling into fornication. People are falling into immoral life. children are having wrong relationships they are in school level 
some girl will come and say i love you and then that boy is you know doomed and you know this guy is like you know oh look at this this girl told i love you my father called me don't be today morning and this girl told i love you see see you know the devil knows when to find a ca- catch you at the right moment you know maybe your father maybe stand you that day or maybe said you are not studying well that thing and then you know, finally go to school and one girl comes up to you and say you know but maybe call it darling or you know honey and you say look my father called me donkey she called me darling oh what more should i want this is god's will in my life i should go behind look people are falling into sexual things even people who are married you know there are people in ernakulam there are some uncles over here naga who travel to cold code once in a while for business trip later they came to know he is having an other wife over there in cold code one wife in arnavalam one wife in kolkata business trip once in a while why these are all church going people i'm talking about what happened to these people these children of god were not like this when they came when they came they were very strong in the lord they used to meditate the word of god they used to pray they used to fast and every time but what happened slowly slowly this fasting and prayer started decreasing meditation of the word changed into reading the word going to church and going to uh, you know church meetings has become like an extra you know extra effort they have to put for that pastors have come to a level of forcing people please come please come and you know finally they are getting angry with the pastor we think that pastor just want some people in the church no why he is telling you to come to church why he is telling you to attend meetings even during this you know i know sometimes in zoom also you know you know maybe there will be some range problem or some they are maybe having duty at home maybe a work at home whatever it may be okay then if the video is off it's fine but some people they purposely switch off the video even though they are at home doing nothing they will not on the video why because when the video is off it is as if he is there in the meeting or if he is not there in the meeting people don't know some some people will sit you know with their face away from the video you know why because they don't want to show their face because you know why? you know this are all happening now <laughs> why because they are scared they are scared to face these spiritual things but if they are sitting before a movie if it is some you know some superhero movie they are glued to the tv why because there is no guilty feeling over here but when they talk of the word of god when meeting is happening the holy spirit will start pricking your heart that is why you are not able to own the video that is why you are moving your face away from the screen you know why because the devil is telling you move away go away don't go for spiritual meetings don't go for camp even parents are coming to that point why this sexual immorality this evil desire is getting into their hearts and the bible is clearly telling you put to death put to death put to death all these things why don't think that if your parents are going to church you can put to death all these things no not only your parents you have to you know fall on your knees you have to cry out to god not because your parents are crying you have to cry out because you have a personal relationship with jesus christ hallelujah in you know, some places you know we see you know the wife the mother in the house is praying but the father doesn't pray you know he tell i will buy tomato and potato you know you go pray i will buy these things and bring home you know uh, wife you go and pray no you know it's not just being the head of the family just for buying potato and tomato no you are head of the family you know why because you are the one who have to play the major role for the spiritual things at home for family prayer you are the first one the father in the house or the husband in the house should be the first person who calls the family to sit for prayer who is supposed to teach children sunday school verses not the mother the father because the bible says fathers you should lead your children spiritually it's written in ephesians and colossians but now what is happening the wives are praying the mothers are praying the husbands are just buying chapati and porota that's all no you have to pray you god has put you as the head of the family because you are the one who have to pray more more than your wife more than the mother of the house you have to pray more the children the the daughters and the sons they should see their father on their knees crying out to the lord they should see your father's praying at home 
That is what you have to show, not that strictness with the stick in your hand and trying to show the father's role. No, the father's main role is on his knees. And people are not having time to pray. Even the ladies in the house, they're always praying for needs. They're always praying for chapati and that's all. Oh, my son should get admission. My husband should get more job. My husband should get more salary. My amachi at home. My apachan at home. But what about the spiritual things in, in the word of God? How many of you pray for the gift of prophecy? How much you pray for the gift of discernment? How many of you pray for the gift of healing? Receive. You have to pray. You know, I know there are a lot of ladies who pray a lot, but what are you praying for? That is the important thing. Are you praying for the earthly things of this world or are you praying for the heavenly things? How many of you pray, Lord, let my son, oh, let them be filled with the gift of prophecy. Everybody is praying, let my son become an engineer, let my son become a doctor. But how many of you are praying, let my son become a pastor? Let my son become an evangelist? Even though he's an engineer, let him be an evangelist first and then let him be an engineer. Let him be an evangelist engineer. Let him be an evangelist doctor. Wherever he goes for a doctor, wherever he gets a job in hospital, let him be a man of God who shares the gospel with all the patients. You understand what I'm talking about? Put spiritual things in front. Let all the other things be done. Yes, you have to pray for their needs. Good. But let spiritual things be put in front. You know what's happening? Money. Look at this covetousness, which is idolatry. God is talking about money. See, if money is catching your heart, if you are giving more value for money, I will give an example maybe to find out what's going through your heart. Suppose you, you comfort a poor person and the Holy Spirit in your heart, you know, convicts you to give maybe $10 to this poor man. I don't know how much $10, if it's too costly, I know. I'm just taking about 500 rupees or in India. You know, if it, is, if it is $10, if God is telling you to give $10 to this poor man, suppose, you know, you gave this. Before giving, you know, before giving this $10, you know, there is an invisible thread that is tied on to this note and the other end of the rope is to your heart. Have you felt that before? Should I give? Should I not give? Should I give? Should I not give? There is a pulling. <laughs> And suppose the Holy Spirit, you know, convicts you more and you give that 20, you give that 10 rupee, 10 dollar to that poor person. And after you gave the 10 dollar to this poor person, next time, whenever you see this poor man walking in front of you, you think as if a 10 dollar is walking in front of you. Am I right? You always look at how, you look at him with the 10 dollar that you gave. And suppose that man, you know, uh, after like 10 or 15 years, he, uh, God blesses him and he gets a good job in some place. You know, we will tell in our mind, look, because I gave him $10, now he's got a good job. See, now where this rope has gone, the rope has gone till, till the very, very got job. See, you are not leaving it. I have seen, you know, in many churches, when I go to the Gulf and many other places, you know, I have seen on the church pillar, on the church pillar, it is written, donated by Chaco and family. Oh, that, that, that pillar of that building, he, that Chaco is holding on to that pillar. No, let Jesus be the pillar of that church. You understand what I'm talking about? She sponsor, you give the things, but don't, you don't have authority. If you are helping for missions, if you're helping for a church building, whatever you do, don't use that money to show authority over there. Don't use that money to show that you are something. You understand what I'm going? Every money that God is God given. It's God given. If God tells you to give to somebody, give it and don't think in return. Don't expect things back from him. See, I'm, I'm, when I'm talking, when I'm sharing this to you, these are some things that happen in my life also. I have helped a lot of children in their studies. But when I see those children not, not giving any thanks to me or maybe not showing the gratitude to me, I have, I have seen in my heart, I get angry with those people. I have seen, I have talked with my wife and say, see, we helped them. Look, now he's not even turning back. But the Holy Spirit told me, no, I told you to give. Don't expect anything from him back. And I had to repent at that situation because every money, it is God given. And if God tells you to give, and if you are expecting anything in return, please don't give it as a gift. Give it as a debt. Don't expect it as in return. If it is a gift, don't expect anything in return. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's go forward. You know, money, if these things are catching your heart, there is something 
the, 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 the earthly thing is catching your heart. Your mind is being focused on the earthly thing. Let's go forward. Okay, so put to death all these things. Number two, what is the second thing that comes free into your life when you go, even you're focusing more on earthly things? And if you're not that spiritually praying or meditating. Number two, right, verse eight. Right, verse eight. Number two, verse eight. I'll read that verse. But now you yourself are to put off all these. What are these? Anger, wrath, Malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. I want one of you to, can one of you read that again? But now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Yes, so right over there. You know, right over there next to uh, eight, okay, right over there, that verse number two, verse eight, right over there, okay, put, put off, okay, put off, put off, anger, rage, get rid of, okay, get rid of these things, get rid of, what we have to get rid of, anger, wrath or rage, malice, slander, filthy language, See, what is God speaking to us over here? Let me ask you, my dear brothers and sisters. Uh, I want to genuinely, openly ask you, so be frank. I don't want you to raise your hands, nothing, but ask yourself in your heart. Are you more angry before you coming to faith or after coming to faith? Hope you understood my question. <laughs> Are you more angry or are you getting more angry before you got saved or after you getting saved? You might be thinking, what a question is this, right? How can I answer this question? <laughs> See, what is happening? People are getting so angry. You know why? Because before coming to faith, yes, we all had this anger in our hearts. But you know what happened? When you got saved, you realize that that is wrong. And he fell before the Lord and said, Lord, I am a very angry person. Forgive me. Forgive me. And you ask God forgiveness and talk. God took away that evil spirit of anger from your life. And what happened after that? After that, you did not continue in prayer. You did not continue in the fasting that you had before. You did not continue in the meditation of the word of God that you had before. And you know what happened? In your heart, the word of God started decreasing. So this evil spirit of anger... It will go around, you know, looking around and finally when it comes back, it looks into your heart. The word of God is not there. The word of God is not rooted in your heart. You know what happens? He will go and bring the captain of anger, you know, more major guy, you know, more bigger guy. And he will come and get into your heart. That is why in churches, many people are not willing to forgive each other. People have got so angry that churches have got split. They split the church and because they have money, they assign a pastor. They start a church and they assign a pastor and in that church and they start a church showing their power. What does the Bible say? If you come to the altar to put a sacrifice and if you remember that your brother has something against you, not that even you have again, but your brother has something against you, you should go keep the sacrifice they go and settle it with him. I'll talk about forgiveness more. It's coming closer. See, wrath, anger. See, what is this rage? Rage and wrath is, you know, one step ahead of anger. You know, in Malayalam, you can say, you know, the anger to kill, kolla nola anger to kill. I don't know if uh, the ladies might not, might not understand, but the men might understand. Because many of the men, when we were studying in our schools, sometimes, you know, because of our mischievousness, Teacher has told us to get out. I don't know how many have been, been kicked out of the class, but don't raise your hands. Don't say testimony right now, okay? So, you know, when they're kicked out of the class, you know, we are so angry because in the college days, if somebody tells you to get out, we know in colleges, you know, the, the, there won't be any grill in the window. So we just have to jump out of the window, just go. But in school, it's not like that. In school, if you're kicked out of the class, you have to stand outside in the corridor. And, you know, when you're standing so angry, you know, there may be some tune or something that you made fun of before. That tune will walk in front of you, smiling and saying, outstanding student, you know. And finally, we get this anger. 
you know, after I get my 10th standard certificate, after I get my 12th standard certificate, I will kill this teacher, you know, I will say some bad language to this teacher, you know, we try to keep this angle, but you know, finally, after 10th or 12th, after you're getting your grades and your certificates, you forgot to get angry with the teacher, or we forgot to kill the teacher, but this anger statement is there in your mind. Hmm. You know, some children, I have seen, you know, when fathers get angry with them, when the father gets angry with them, the father just turns, finally, the child, <laughs> you know, they will show this, you know, behind the father, and suddenly the father will turn, what did he show? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> they start acting, you know, see, just imagine, when you show the tongue out in, in, in your father's back, you know what's the meaning of that? It is just equal to you kicking your father. You might think it is nothing, you know, showing like this tongue, what's going to happen. It is just like as if you wanted to kick your father, but you are not able to do it. So you put your tongue outside and try to show something. Trying to mock your father from behind. Why? That anger. That's why, you know, in Malayali, in Malayali people, you know, some, some children try to call their father Da. Some people try to call their, ma their mother D. So now they're calling together daddy, you know, well, you know, they're angry so much. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, if you're not able to control your anger, you'll come to a tendency of wrath. You'll come to a level of rage where you're so angry even to kill that person. If this anger is not going away from your life, remember you are not thinking about heavenly things, you're thinking about worldly things, you're focused on your mobile, you're focused on your game, you're focused on PUBG, you're focused on all that, but you're not focused on the Bible. Whenever you read the Bible, you're sleeping over it. You use your Bible as a pillow because you're not able to focus on spiritual things. Why? Because you're not serious. But you're so serious about the game. You're so serious about the movie. You're so serious about every other thing. You're so serious about the party in your friend's house. But when you, so you hear about a party in your friend's house, party, 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 mommy, papa, send me for party. I want to go for party. But if somebody is telling there is a meeting in my home, you're not so happy about it. How many of you children have made fights in your home to go for a meeting? Hello? <laughs> You make fight to go for a party, but how many children have made fights in your home to go for a camp, for a spiritual camp? Papa, I want to go for the spiritual camp. If you don't leave me, I want to go. How many of you people have made fun? What is happening? Every other thing. Filthy language. You know, <laughs> now people are, you know, using prayer as a method of filthy language to show their anger on other believers. You know, I've seen many people praying in high tone, you know, and if they're angry with some brother or some sister, they will praise like this, you know. Kattave! Avare sandar sikhename! You know? God, visit them! You know why? You know, when we're praying like this, you know, we're praying at least, you know, let one, one car at least hit him. And when he's, you know, broken, he's broken his leg and he's in the hospital, we will go and stand there Oh, you broke your leg. Eh? In our mind, we will say, <laughs> this should have happened in your life. See, why? Because, you know, you are acting outside. And, you know, you are praying and you are showing your anger upon that person through prayer. Brothers, sisters, how much time, how, how long are you going to play with this? How long are you going to play with these spiritual, these tricks to, you know, touch other people like this? No. We have to be genuine. We have to be faithful. We have to, don't try to act. Let it come from inside. Let's go to the third thing. Number three. So, first thing, you have to put to death. Number three, get, number two, get, you know, uh, get rid of. Number three, right. Number three, verse nine. Verse nine. Can somebody read that verse 9? Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices. And yes. Have put on a new self. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Do not lie to one another. See, this is so simple. It is so simple. The word of God is so clear. The third thing that gets into your life is lies. Telling lies. 
first thing we talked about in all these things in the verse 5 but verse 8 about anger and all but thirdly if you are focusing more on worldly things this spirit of lies will enter into your life you will start making lies you will start telling lies you know what we you know what we believers have done we have spiritualized this lies and we have categorized into two type of lies one is called small lies one is called big lies you know <laughs> small lies big lies and so uh, you know the bible doesn't talk about small lies and big lies but we have brought this new thing into our life and we have spiritualized that lies called small lies big lies and we think all the small lies god will slowly delete <laughs> and in all the big lies god will give punishment see what are the small lies what are the small lies that we do usually you know there was this uh, this boy you know when i was studying in the seminary you know he is he had this habit of saying lies so you know so he uh, usually says lies back and forth so one day you know he told some lies and went to uh, took leave and went home but when he came back he just jumped in he ran into this dean of students by mistake and suddenly you know the the dean of students asked where did he go and you know he by mistake he told a lie like this you know i went for my grandfather's uterus operation how many of you understood god and said i went for my and you know this dean of students like you know he was going to get angry with the student but because of this lies which turned out to be like joke you know he just uh, laughed and he just he said go, go 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 see people are saying lies you know some people are like giving leave letters to their to their children in school they must have maybe you know become lazy and they didn't go to school and the parents are writing in front of their children my son was sick and that is why he couldn't come why he didn't come to school because he was lazy but the own parents is writing so next time when he gets the report card you know what he'll do he will put the father signature and give from where did he, from where did he learn this lies even sometimes when people are lazy and does not go to sunday school were late for sunday school you know what the parents say go to the pastor and say you know you are not feeling well that's why you became late who is teaching this lies own parents are teaching you know my brother when he was studying in mangalore for nursing whenever he wanted to come home he used to tell this lies telling that you know my grandfather is sick and you know the the truth is you know my grandfather actually passed away even before my brother was born and he is always using the grandfather's name to say that he is sick even many people to get leave to come to india to get leave people are writing lies and giving to the office people are stealing the paper that is kept for the office purpose they're taking this paper and giving coming and bringing it at home for for giving to their children for homework some people are stealing the pen some some nurses from the hospital are stealing medicines from the hospital you know that is supposed to be used in the hospital they're stealing it and bringing it home telling that we can use it for home purposes no no don't take anything from the hospital that is not allowed to be taken home don't take anything from your office that is not allowed to be taken home it could be just a, a sheet of paper yes but if it is a sheet of paper you have to give accountability of that also to the to your lord maybe the office manager is not watching these things but you should be faithful you should not be a liar you should not be a thief you should not tell lies to your husband you should not tell to your you know sometimes you know we take it granted my wife's name is binsi you know when our married uh, we have been married for the last 17 years you know during the first years of our marriage sometimes i used to say the so called small lie you know why when i go to some uh, some half an hour uh, distance air place usually my wife will tell me come early because we have to go to the shop today and you know what happens you know when i see my friend over there we talk and you know time just flies away and you know when i am late home when i am on my way my wife will call me acha evda where are you you know he'll come here and you know sometimes you know, i used to say this lies yetta rai you know i am about to reach where i didn't even start from here i didn't even start from that place and i'm telling this lies i'm about to reach where i'm telling lies to my wife and you know what happened slowly slowly these so called small lies when i used to tell my wife when we sat for family prayer i could feel the spirit of unfaithfulness in between me and my wife the prayers were not working out i found it it is wrong finally you know i confessed to my wife saying that you know i thought it is small lies it is okay we can tell my wife once in a while like no 
it is lies, whatever it may be. We can maybe categorize the small lies, blue lies, white lies, whatever it may be. But you know, lies is lies. The Bible is telling, you know, get, put it off. Come on, write down. That, that, write down that, uh, that third one, verse nine, verse nine, you know, write it over there. Write down, come on, write down. Put off, put off this old man. Put off this lies, take it out from your life. In some verses in it's written, you know, peel off. Peel off your old man. That means you know, it's just like, you know, lies is just like something that sticks onto your skin. And you have to peel it off. It is really painful, just like taking your skin off. How many of you have noticed, you know, sometimes just above our nail, you know, just on top of our nail, a small, our, our skin comes out a small sometimes. Have you seen that? Sometimes we get that, you know. And, you know, sometimes we think it is very small and we just try to peel it off and a big area goes off. Oh, then it is so painful. It is so painful. And all the chili and everything that you eat, you know, it will start coming over there. All the spicy stuff attacks over there. So I was just thinking, peeling off that small skin, if that is causing a lot of pain, the Bible is telling this lies, the spirit of lies, it is just like skin stuck onto your body. And it is not easy to take it out. You have to fast and pray. You have to meditate in the word of God. You have to spend quality time of prayer before the Lord at least for half an hour a day. And then only you can take it off. Now let's go to the next side. Let's go to the next side. Heavenly things. The three things that God is going to give you if you are focused on God, if you're focused on, on the Lord. Write down on the right side. Heavenly things. Right. Number one. Right. Number one. Number one. Right. Verse 12. Verse 12. Right. Verse 12. And can uh, uh, Olivia, Olivia and Jason over there, can somebody of you read that? Can you just read that verse? Yeah, read verse uh, 12. Yes. Therefore, as God's chosen people... I think two, uh, two devices are on over there. Two devices. You can just switch off the audio of one device and you can just read it from another device. Yes. Come on, let's read it. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you for that. See, what is it to know here? This, the thing that you, when you are focusing on heavenly things, this is the great thing that God is going to give you. What? You know, he's, God is giving you compassion. God is giving you tender mercy, kindness, humility meekness, long-suffering, these are the things that God is going to give you. This is not free of cost. All the other things, you know, you don't have to invite anger, wrath, or sexual immorality, or, you know, you know, lust. You don't have to invite. This will get freely into your life. You don't have to invite them. But these things, compassion, tender, you know, you know, uh, you know gentleness, humility, this is not something that you're going to get free. No. This you have to, you have to spend time. You have to ask God. You have to cry out to him and say, Lord, give me compassion. See, what is happening in our churches now? In our churches, you know, we have lost compassion. We have lost compassion. We are, judge, we are judging people so fast. It seems, you know, everybody in church is sitting with some AK-47 ready to shoot somebody down. <laughs> ready to find some fault in somebody. You know, just imagine, you know, let me take the example of Jason. You know, Jason, are you married? Yes. You know, the, no, the person who read the word of God right now. What is your, what is your name? Joshua. He's 17 uh, years jo old. Joshua. Okay, Joshua. Are you married? No, Joshua is not married. Are you married? No. <laughs> no, okay. Oh, Joshua is saying so sad, you know. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, see, see, just imagine, I'm just, suppose Joshua is not married. Suppose Joshua is standing near a shop and having a, a drink, maybe a, maybe a lemon juice or something he's having. And just imagine one girl named Jennifer who's studying with Joshua is walking on the road. And suddenly Joshua sees Jennifer and Jennifer sees Joshua. And you know, just, and Joshua invites Jennifer to have a drink along with him. 
and he, and she agrees yes i will also have lemon juice and just imagine if if joshua and jennifer is having lemon juice and one of our uncles from the church was walking on the road and saw jennifer and, and joshua standing together finish then you know joshua your life is over you know what this uncle will do he will go around and say ah matya jason the mon undallo the son of jason ah he has got a tail avan ippol vaali vechittundu you know he's he's got a girlfriend now only once he saw only once see imagine if joshua and jennifer is seen in many places together then joshua needs counseling there is something wrong but only once people are judging so quickly you know why people have lost compassion people are finding faults in one another very quickly they are not finding the reason they are not looking around why this happened why he said that why he reacted like that people are not showing compassion my dear elders it is very high time that we show compassion to our children love them show them that you love them care for them bring them to the lord be spiritual fathers be spiritual mothers for them rather than being judges and rather than being police in the in the in the church don't be cids and police in the church be spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers i understand what i'm talking about compassion humility meekness these are the things that god is going to give you humility wow so let me ask you my dear brothers you can show by action you can give me an answer by action who should be more humble a person who is 10 years into faith or a person who is 1 year into faith who should be more humble a person who is 10 year into faith or 1 year show me 10 or 1 okay 10 some people are showing 10 is there anybody who is showing some people are not showing anything you don't understand what i'm talking about some sisters are laughing they don't know what to say <laughs> it is okay i am not going to crucify you is it 10 or 1 some people say 10 some people didn't say anything hello are you with me okay some why did you say 10 why did you say 10 tell me why why uh, why are you telling 10 uh, i think uh, uh, kedrick and emmy i think you said 10 why did you say 10 uh, because the day you accepted jesus should be the same even after 10 years you should still have the zeal okay yeah that's very close yeah okay that's right i was saying all of them should be humble one year and 10 year <laughs> that is a that is a nice way to escape huh? <laughs> no it is it is because as you grow in as you grow daily every year passes by you're yes. growing in as the knowledge of god is the more knowledge of god you have it it makes you more humble so in 10 years you are more humbler than the first year that you were wonderful jason you have said the right answer wonderful you know why because for the last 10 years he has been meditating the word of god for the last 10 years he has been praying so he will become more and more humble every day he will say god i am not worthy to stand before you i am not worthy to kneel before you because you know every day as you pray you become more and more humble the first year the person who's wandered into faith he doesn't know that much he doesn't he, he hasn't meditated the word of god that much he hasn't fasted that much he hasn't prayed that much you understand what i'm talking about what do we see in churches now what do we see in churches now the one year fellow is more humble than the 10 year old person because the 10 year old person has become the elder and you know what is the meaning of elder the meaning of elder is that you should be the servant of the younger hello are you with me are you understanding what is the meaning of elder elder is not to show your power elder means you are the servant of the younger people in the church you should be the person who puts the mat you should be the person who receives the young people you should be be the person the last one to say something in church because you are more humble than anybody else i understand what i'm talking about humble humility everything changes inside your heart you are different you you are always in a, your your head is bowed down before the lord every time because you are not worthy even to look up because of god 
you are the one your grace is sufficient for me you are the one who gives me gives me the you know the 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 the, the worthiness that is to say to call your name jesus to sing praises unto your name let's go to the second thing and a lot of examples are coming but i am not getting into that number 2 number 2 the second thing that god is going to give you after compassion and all see i forgot to tell you right verse 2 and right over there put on okay put on compassion right over there put on next to verse 12 right put on what compassion all these things you have to put on now let's go to the second one number 2 number 2 read verse 13 verse 13 bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has grievance against someone forgive as the lord forgave you as praise god hallelujah see for verse 12 you can also put as clothe yourself you know because in many versions it's called clothe yourself put on or clothe yourself it is not easy it is not easy to clothe yourself you know wearing clothes how do you wear clothes do you take the shirt and pan and throw it into the air and jump inside like a cartoon picture or thing no you don't do that it is not easy to clothe yourself putting the pan putting the shirt is not easy so clothing yourself means compassion and humility and everything it's not that after the meeting you know i will place my hand on everybody and say now let compassion come upon you no i cannot do that i can maybe to pray, pray the let the holy spirit come upon i can pray that but i cannot pray for compassion in a way that you have to receive from god So now the second thing over here, God is telling to forgive, bear with one another, bear with one another. So let's look into that. See, forgive, bear with one another, bear with each other. You know, you have to learn that means God will give you the grace to forgive. Wow, that is something great, my brothers and sisters. You might think it is easy to forgive. No, it is not easy to forgive. it is easy to preach on forgiveness but to practice forgiveness it is a daily daily sacrifice you have to kill yourself you have to that means not means killing yourself means it's not that you commit suicide no you have to kill your old man you have to deny yourself every day then only you will understand how to forgive it is not easy and not only that you know the bible is taking the example of jesus christ see that that the, the whole verse bearing with one another and forgiving one another if anybody has to complain against another even has christ forgive you so you also must do wow see it is not the example of david it's not the example of moses it's not the example of paul or peter you know the bible the holy spirit is taking the example of our lord jesus christ he didn't have any fault in him but you know he chose to forgive and he's god is telling us you have to take the example of jesus christ you know in order to understand this forgiveness i went back to you know because the the symbol of forgiveness is shown on the cross of of calvary i started looking into the bible i took john matthew you know mark luke john i took the gospels i read all the portions where you know jesus was crucified and i started studying what is this you know why by the bible is showing christ an example why i started studying i saw the different movies you know which is released in the name uh, for jesus jesus of nazareth jesus passion of the christ son of god i saw all these movies but still i couldn't understand because in isaiah it is written you know the face of jesus was deformed it was not in form that means you know yeshu no moham al allah tarizila it was not in the form of a human human face but none of the movies you know could not explain that much because you know if, if, if that was done nobody could have watched that movie jesus face was torn apart his eyes his nose his mouth is all display, you know misplay displaced in different places it was torn apart i kept on searching i kept on searching finally i came to know about a doctor a doctor who you know did a scientific study to look into a body a person who's lying on the cross for 6 hours what will happen to that person's body i saw the study that this doctor did i read it was 52 points were there i was really shocked i was crying i was in tears after reading that he was telling the torture that jesus went through on the cross of calvary he was torn apart is is name the you know it, 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 it which we see if we read the bible and see the movie it is not there it is not clear 
oh, you know what happens, you know, all these nails, you know, and you know what happens when, when Jesus Christ is, you know, uh, nailed on the cross, you know, what they do is they, they make his leg 45 degrees bend and they put lime on the cross and they put the six inch nail into his leg. So he's hanging on his hands. And you know what happens? Because he's hanging, Jesus Christ finds it very difficult to breathe because he's hanging the whole weight of his body on his hands. And when he, and, and, and in order to take one breath, you know what Jesus had to do? Jesus had to stamp on his feet, on that nail, go up, take breath and again fall down. So every time he's stamping on this nail, his leg is being torn apart again, one by one. He's in pain. He's, he's, he, for every breath, you know, for every breath, this is not about five minutes or 10 minutes, six hours. And you know, inside, you know what, because, and because Jesus could not take that much breath as we took on the cross, he was taking, you know, in, in between, between, he was taking, because when he's not able to bear and he's falling on his hands, you know what happens? And then he keeps on falling. I know nurses and doctors will understand, you know what happened? These three joints on our hand, three joints. These three joints started separating. None of the bones were broken, but he started separating on these joints. You know what happened? Jesus Christ, one hand extended to nine inches and both his hands extended to nine inches. Finally, he's hanging down like this on the cross and it is becoming more and more difficult for him to breathe. And you know what happens? Because Jesus was not able to breathe that much, you know what happened? The oxygen content in his blood started decreasing. And because of that, his heartbeat started increasing. And this doctor is writing, a man who's lying on the cross, you know, our heartbeat is 72 times per minute. And because of his low oxygen level in his blood, his heart started beating so fast. And, you know, Jesus Christ's heart will come to a level of 220 times per minute. I know some people, you know, even human beings, when they go through high level, it comes up to that. Nurses and doctors know about it. 220 times per minute. And you know what happened? And because of the, the, the speed of the heart, two to times per minute, and you know, the heart could not hold it. And finally, you know what happened? The heart of Jesus Christ was bursting inside. It was bursting inside. We, we are not seeing this. We maybe we saw it in the movie or maybe we saw it in the Bible. We read it in the Bible, that's all. But you know, that six hours, our Lord Jesus Christ went through torture like anything. And still, after all this pain, see, I tell you, I'm stopped with this. I'm not going to the third point. The time is not there. So I'm not going to, the, I'm stopping with the second point. You know, what's happening? Because, you know, see, it is not easy to forgive when we are in pain. Am I right, my brothers and sisters? When we are in pain or when our mood is off, it is not easy to forgive. You know, suppose we are walking and suddenly our small toe, small toe and small toe, toe on the leg hits on the side of the wall. And you're, you're in pain and somebody comes and stamps on this finger, what will happen? You know, you, you will make a new English dictionary maybe, you know, of different words. You know, you get so angry. If, if, you're, if, you're, if you're in mood off, if you're in mood off, so if your friend comes and cracks a joke, what do you say? You'll say, get out. You know, you won't feel like laughing, right? Whatever big joke it may be, if you're not in a situation, if you're not in a mood, you will get angry. Because you know why? It is not easy to forgive when you are in pain. But our Lord Jesus Christ, he went through the pain that we can even, never even think about. We cannot even imagine. And you know, still with all the pain hanging on the cross, he is telling, you know, my forgive them. Forgive them for they know not what they do. Do you think my brothers and sisters, did these people who are, who are nailing Jesus on the cross, did they do something without knowing? But what is this prayer that Jesus is saying? I can understand what this God is, what Jesus, because you know, he is praying, he's telling because they don't know what they are doing, to whom they are doing, they don't know. They don't know I am the Messiah, they don't know I am the Son of God, so forgive them. My brothers and sisters, for pity, silly things, we are not forgiving people and we are keeping anger for years together. Years together. 
maybe you might be angry with your parents maybe you know when they uh, parted the land for you you know maybe they didn't give the land that they had to give maybe the money that they gave you maybe it became less you're still angry with your parents some people are angry with their neighbors some people are angry with their manager because the manager said something all bad some people may be you know kicked you out of the job you're angry with that person you are not being able to forgive the bible is telling you get connected focus on heavenly things focus on heavenly things not on earthly things and unless and until you focus on heavenly things you are not going to understand what forgiveness is all about brothers and sisters when i'm preaching to you i know i know in the coming days god is going to teach me the next level of forgiveness i don't know this is not going to end as long as you are in this world step after step god will be taking you higher and higher to a level of forgiveness you know to a level that you know we can never understand what the forgiveness of the lord jesus christ is it is beyond our understanding close your eyes my brothers and sisters close your eyes close your eyes bow down before the lord and i want everybody to just close your eyes and and just talk to him personally you, maybe your person sitting next to you maybe they don't have to hear your wife doesn't have to hear your husband doesn't have to hear your parents doesn't have to hear your children doesn't have to hear but in your heart examine yourself and say ask him lord lord where am i in your presence lord am i focusing lord on this world or am i focusing a lot on on you oh god things above and things below if any part of this message if it touched your heart it could be anything it could be about the three things that we talked about or it could be about lack of compassion lack of forgiveness whatever it may be if the holy spirit spoke to you and if you want to repent before the lord i want you to place your right hand next to your heart right now and cry out to god and tell him lord i have i have failed in this area oh god i need your help oh god call out to jesus keep me to lord jesus keep me to 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 there's a ways that i am as one them are we wish to be one give me power every hour to be true there's a ways that i was born them are we wish to be one give me power every hour to be true before you oh god god we humble ourselves before you god we we know that it's without you we can do nothing oh god shall we your mercy is upon us shall we your grace upon us that we when we focus on heavenly things we be focused on you every day 
I'll help everybody who's submitting their lives right now to you. Help them, Lord. Let them be a blessing to your kingdom. Let them be a blessing to this church. Let them be a blessing to their pastor. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' precious name, I pray.